Alrighty, folks, let's get this show on the road. Uh, welcome, it, everybody, uh, to another Illustration Boot Camp. My name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host today. We have been working on an illustration project for the last few days, focusing on various portions of the process every day. And today, we are going to be creating a video, an Instagram reel, actually, because we've concepted our project, we've illustrated it, rendered it out, and painted it up. Um, we have animated the scene, and now we're going to take all of those assets and uh, put it into kind of a process reel with voiceover and all that good stuff. I'm super, super excited and pumped uh, to 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 kind of get into it and see what we can make out of all the various assets we have. Um, so let's go for it. Let's jump right into it. All right, so this is Adobe Rush, and I do have our time lapse sequence um, kind of uploaded in here. If I scrub through my video, you can see we go through our uh, little thumbnailing process where we created all of our little ideas for scenes, where we settled on our scene and started detailing. I've got the um, second day where we came through and started really painting things up and deciding how everything was going to look uh, all together. Uh, and then I have also day three where we came through and started animating uh, little portions of the video and stuff. And this is really cool. I could just honestly throw some music on this and upload just the time lapse of the creation but I really personally when it comes to making a video like this I feel like I really want to uh, add a little more element of education to it um, and it doesn't have to be crazy you know these uh, these Instagram reels are about 60 seconds long um, and so uh, I, I just want to kind of talk over this video and briefly explain what I did and then invite my audience to go to the Adobe Live YouTube channel um, where uh, they can see the full videos, you know, day one, two, three, and four. So um, uh, on top of this, on top of this little time lapse, um, which is about 45 seconds long-ish, uh, 46 seconds it looks like, uh, I'm also going to navigate and add some other things. So I'm going to come over to my plus button and add media uh, and it does already have my um, footage area open here for my project because I did add my raw footage time lapse here um, but I'm gonna go back and just navigate the these are just the files on my computer um, you can see I do have um, day one two three and four so if I come in here you can see a lot of my illustrations and things that I prepped uh, for the other days stuff like that, which we are gonna use a little bit of um, I think the first thing that I really want to grab is the illustration boot camp episode 3 episode 3 I believe uh, background so I'm going to go ahead and add that we'll say add um, and what I'm gonna do let me actually make sure um, that you folks can really see everything here because I think um, that my window is there we go make sure you can see everything all right so um, I think that I you know I have this background here but what I want to do is kind of bump uh, our footage up to the second area over here and let's go ahead and kind of expand this so that I can see the whole view uh, because I want to uh, Kind of edit the aspect ratio of this video in order to do that uh, i'm gonna probably need some background graphics so i've got my background in there now i'm gonna come over here to the change se sequence aspect ratio button uh, and i'm gonna change this to 9 by 16 because that is the ratio we will need um, for our instagram reel uh, and i'm gonna edit the size of our video because i did um I did work on all of this stuff in a square canvas. Uh, and so when you export the time lapses and, and videos and things from uh, Adobe Fresco, it will export it at the ratio of your initial file size. Um, and so I think that this is fine, you know, maybe not ideal for a reel, but if I come over here and have, you know, my background, in here I can actually I should be able to kind of grab this and 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 edit it maybe if I grab what I want to do is kind of stretch this out so let's come over here to duration we can actually change this in the duration if I come over here um, I want the duration of that point to be a little bit 
longer. Yeah, there we go. So we can kind of bump it out. Let's go ahead and make this about 50 or so seconds. There we go. That works for us. Um, uh, so now it's a little longer, so it's easier for me to kind of grab that handle. Um, and I just want to make sure that this is the duration here. So I can kind of shrink that down. Um, and as we go through our time lapse, you can see it just looks really nice to have something in the background there so that it's not all crazy. And as I get into the um, illustration process, everything is very matchy matchy um, and it looks neat. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do uh, also is I, I think that for an Instagram reel especially a, a process a creative process reel it's always really great to show an example before you dive into the meat of the work and then also show a finished example at the end of everything um, and so what I've done actually if I come over to my files again and go into day four um, I also should have I believe let me come into maybe it's an illustration bootcamp yeah here I do actually have a version of our animation which I exported in a different uh, canvas size so if I go ahead and drag this here I can kind of throw that in there um, let me actually make sure I drag this above there we go um, I want to kind of pull that and we'll drag that right down in there. Boom. We'll move that right over there. Uh, and so this is about seven seconds long. So if I play, let me stretch this out a little bit. If I go ahead and play our video, you can see we've got our little animated scene that plays while I could do like a brief intro of the video. And then we would go into the process of what I kind of introed. It'll go through all of my different um, points of work and things. And then we can end with uh, a another preview of the animation with like some call outs and like maybe a thank you, maybe a uh, link where people can go and watch all the different boot camps, things like that. Um, so I am just going to copy, like right click and duplicate this. And I'm gonna drag that to the end of my video here. Um, and let's go ahead and shorten that. So now, you know, you have the little animation here, which is really great. You've got the chunk of your work and then you have um, kind of going right back into uh, the, the piece here. Um, and what I want to do actually, while this is really great, um, I don't want it to be like such a awkward transition where it just like mm, boom cuts to it. So uh, a transition would be really nice here. And if I come over to uh, effects you can see we can do a, like a dissolve a black to white a wipe left wipe right all that sort of stuff um, and it might actually really be cool to do like a wipe left let's see what that is i could just grab that and drag it to that transitional point right there um, and then let's hit space bar and just kind of play and see that's kind of cool uh it's a little you know maybe not super uh, fancy fancy, but it's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and control Z and let's see if we can try Another one that might work better um, Dissolve could be interesting dissolve just like a nice little fade uh, and I'm actually going to zoom in I'm just gonna edit my area here and I'm gonna kind of stretch that dissolve out just a little bit um, Something like that maybe uh, and let's see how that transition works shall we And it fades and then we've got this looking good looking good i kind of like that maybe it doesn't have to be as uh long maybe a little shorter on this side of it and then as we transition in it just quickly goes there we can have call outs and whatever kind of information and things we need up here which could be really cool um so now that we have that in there i feel like we also need to put a transition similar over here on this transitional area uh, which is pretty cool. Let's just see how that looks just quick and it just gets right into the meat of the work I like it um, So we can have uh, something like uh, I taught an illustration boot camp uh, on Adobe live in fresco and then just go directly into our voiceover Which is sort of how I recorded it and I'll pull that in in a moment um, 
but I, I will explain everything and then there is some space around and I think one thing that we need to do so that it doesn't look odd is like put some little text call outs and stuff with Mogerts um, uh, on the top and bottom of this just to do some interesting uh, call outs and things as people are listening or watching the show you know watching the video um, so that there's some some something to denote you know basically what's going on here so um, I am I'm gonna I'm gonna do that because um, I think that this is uh, probably exactly as much as we need really uh, when it comes to the um, the visuals the animated and video visuals for this uh, so let's go ahead and um, well we should add our voiceover first and then kind of do our call outs with the voiceover so um, I'm gonna come over let's go back and let's go into audio and I have a voiceover that lasts uh, roughly a minute um, and I'm gonna say add that and that just adds this in right here um, and I'm going to maybe turn my music down a little bit and we're gonna take a listen uh, to my voiceover that I've done I taught an illustration boot camp on Adobe Live. I started by thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes we could use for our project. Let the chat vote, and we actually ended up going with this cute little scene of our crocodile character sitting in the middle of a circle of stones. We started kind of playing around with different styles we could go for for the rendering process and then really built out the scene, adding the solid shapes, choosing colors to start painting everything in, developing a style for how that texture would be applied. And then we actually isolated each individual shape, made sure to add any final details to them and then started animating them in the scene. Things bobbing up and down in the water, the uh, water ripples started coming into play. It was a lot of fun. So if you want to check it out, head over to Adobe Live YouTube. Perfect. Perfect. Honestly, the way that I recorded this actually was um, I took that time lapse video and I just sat here at my desk and I talked about what I was singing as I played it, hoping that doing that would make everything really line up super well with the video itself and I wouldn't have to do too much editing. Um, and I think it actually worked out great. My only concern is that I may have to shorten the beginning of it because there is a pretty large gap in um, audio from the very beginning. So let's listen to that portion again. I taught an illustration boot camp on Adobe Live. Yeah, so um, I feel like we should maybe do this. I am going to kind of shorten that right there and it'll bump in and let's see if I, so let's see how that goes. I taught an illustration boot camp on Adobe Live. I started by thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes. I like it. I like it. I like it. So it's pretty like right to the point right in the beginning. And there's a little bit of empty space for just a few moments right there. But that can be an opportunity, like I said, to use those call outs um, up there above here. This can be where I say, you know, um, I can write you know, boot camp, uh, illustration boot camp in Adobe Fresco um, on Adobe Live. And then I can have like my handles uh, if I want to add like my other social media handles or I can add the link for the Adobe Live YouTube like or a little call out that says don't forget follow Adobe Live on YouTube something like that that would be a good thing to put there um, or it could just say uh, Adobe Live illustration boot camp creative process or something right there just to let everybody know that right after this is going to be all of that content so we can kind of experiment with that a little bit we'll do the call outs here because we know that the voiceover really meshes very well and then right here is going to be just more of kind of what we're going to do in this space right there you know we'll have all of those call outs and everything coming back and then uh it's a little longer here so we can also do like a thank you you know and also uh just to to keep in mind here 
about um, what I'm starting with and ending with. I am starting with the same image that I'm ending with. So on Instagram, if somebody wants to um, watch the reel or they come across the reel swiping through other content, um, they might be more willing or more likely to watch it again if um, right when it ends, it kind of starts back up in the same place. Like there's no really super hard discernible moment where the video is over and they might be interested to stick around and watch it another time or two which is good for me uh, you know as far as engagement on social media but it also makes that end of the video a lot less jarring for whoever's watching it feels comfortable as you're taking in that content which is always a plus so um Let's go ahead and I am going to kind of shorten the very end of this because we don't need that to be so long. Um, and I think that is just a really nice, well-contained uh, area. Um, so let's actually start because we want to add probably some more graphics to the um, the beginning and end, which we will kind of dive into a little bit of um, uh, Photoshop, Firefly, and uh, Adobe Express with, uh, but we don't need any of those to do the callouts real quick. So let's let's work on the callouts for now. I'm gonna go ahead and close this here so I can just kind of take in the view of my time lapse. I'll stretch that out so I can really look at everything we've got going on. Uh, and let's take a listen here and see what um, we're going to add. I started by thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes we could use for our project. Okay. I started by thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes we can use for our project. That is like a pretty good um, kind of highlight sentence or something along those lines. So let's come over here um, to the graphics and I'm gonna say add graphic. Uh, and I'm literally just gonna use what's already available to me in Adobe Rush because um, honestly, I, I think this is kind of a one-stop shop truly for um, all the things that you need to make a nice video. Um, and as somebody who doesn't really get into After Effects and Premiere Pro very often, this really does have everything I need. Um, and I like kind of exploring what we've got going on in here. So let's come in to, um, I think, uh, like a title. Let's go more and look, kind of peek at what we've got here. So they have like full, full titles uh, here, which are like pretty large. Um, which could be used for like a big video. Um, but they also have like this thick and thin title, which if edited properly, you really can use this to um, just be like a really pretty transitional um, call out. So I might go ahead and add this, which that should just drop that right on top there. Um, and let's kind of mouse over and see what this looks like. It's kind of previewed right in there and it does take up my whole screen but if i just want to add this right here you know line that up right there i can do like a nice little a nice little call out there um so let's go ahead and um i'm just going to uh kind of mouse through and just see okay it does come out it does like kind of disappear like that so what we probably should do is maybe put it underneath here I wonder if we could hover it underneath. Probably not. Let's see if there's another one because what I don't want to do is um, have it like disappear over the top of our image and stuff. So let's see. Can I just drag? Yeah, I could drag this one up though. I could drag. I could drag that one up. Let's go ahead and drag this down here. We'll drag this up and we'll kind of push this right back over here and we can do these callouts underneath because the um the video itself if i shrink this down a little bit the video itself actually is um separate from that background so now um this should just disappear right behind our video yeah it just disappears right behind that i actually like that i actually think that's really cool let me go ahead and add our um our effects back our little dissolves um because when i when i separated those it did uh remove our dissolves but um this is i think this will work really nicely i think this will look cool so as this begins i started by thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes we could use for our project okay thumbnailing we can call it thumbnailing and sketching instead of thick and thin there so let's come over here to our uh 
our call out. I'm actually gonna bump this uh, at least after our dissolve transition so it doesn't like pop in while our our scene is still appearing, you know? So we can kind of um, pull that out like so. We could do something like this. So let's say, um, come over to our uh, graphics. And while I have this selected, this will turn into these. So this is in Bebis Kai. Um, and I wonder if we just uh, wanna, they have Bison here and I use Bison a lot in Adobe Express. Um, it's one of my favorite fonts. Uh, so I think that I will switch all of this to Bison so that when we go into Adobe Express and start messing around with graphics and real covers and stuff, um, we can be using the same font. So I'll come over um, and I'll set this to Bison and I will also set this to bold uh, and then let's come into thin and let's also set this to um, bison and uh, uh, just like a quick tip a lot of Adobe apps do this um, but if you use a font in like Photoshop or um, Adobe Rush or uh, Fresco or even in Adobe Express things like that if you have already selected that font um, you don't actually have to scroll through and search for it alphabetically. It typically, if you see, it makes like a little nifty little area up here of like fonts you have used recently. Um, so I can just select it from here, uh, without having to hunt around for it, which is really nice. Oh, I don't actually want it bold too, though. Uh, let's go ahead and we could do like regular but I almost wonder if that's gonna be visible. Let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna scroll through here to where you can see my, um, where you can see my uh, uh, little color palette thing. I wonder if I could get lucky and be, yeah, let's come over here. I'm gonna drag it over this way so that I can select it. Um, and I'm actually going to come over here to the thick and sample text color and i'm going to sample that um blue just so that everything matches my project so let's go ahead and sample that blue um, and i might even want to increase the size uh, of this a little bit just a tiny bit also if you are dragging things left and right in your uh rush file and things are like snapping in places and you can't get it to go exactly where you want it a pretty good rule of thumb is just to take your playhead and scrub to the place that you want to add it and when you move that element it will snap to the playhead so i can put it exactly where i want it to be uh, and i'm going to come over here and i'm just going to look um, I think that I could make this text a little bit larger and I think that because um, uh, thinking about like this being played on a um, phone screen or something, I want to make sure that it is super legible and stuff um, and that might need some work. Uh, as far as its size and everything. I think that I think that would be easy to to read right there um, for like an Instagram reel or something. Uh, and it also leaves room because the Instagram, I probably should stop it like right about here because there are going to be things on Instagram that are like up there in this space. So if I have call outs that begin here, um, I also have enough room to put a second call out if I want. So let's go ahead and I'm going to leave that guy right there. I can even kind of move this with my, uh, there we go. Actually, I don't really need to bump it. That's perfect. Okay. Um, I might also make our thin. I've got regular. Let's do demi bold. It doesn't have to be thick and thin. Honestly, it really doesn't uh, if I don't want it to. Um, but it it is kind of cool to differentiate them uh, slightly because then uh, because they animate and come out uh, differently. It can look really cool. Maybe I do want it thinner. Let's just try it. Let's just try it. And if I come back later and I hate it, then we can change it because uh, it's our project. You know, we can do whatever we want. So let's alter the... Uh, font here or what it says so let's call this um, thumbnails and sketches 
that actually is perfect like the sizing of that so let's go ahead and uh watch that let's see what that looks like I started by thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes we could use for our project, let the chat vote, and we actually ended up going with this cute little scene of our crocodile character That's sitting cute. in the middle of a circle of stones. We started kind of playing around with different styles we could go for for the rendering process and then really built out the scene. Add so we could do one here that's like a building out the scene, but let's uh let's experiment with a different um, call out. I have used um, the clean and fast before. Um, clean and fast is also great. And while it is like a giant title, it's still, um, like I said, I can alter it and change things to really um, suit my needs. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's meant to be a title. Um, let's see what I'm saying here. Sitting in the middle of a circle of stones. We started kind of playing around with different styles we could go for. So we can say here like building building the scene so let's go ahead and add the clean and fast there um and let's see how it looks styles we could go for for the rendering process and then oh this is gonna actually end up yeah it's gonna show up behind so this is really cool too because this has like this little bar that i can line up with the side here it can change the color of that bar uh, which can be really fun. Let's see now that that's not behind Playing there. Let's see. Styles, yeah, and it just comes out. The rendering process, and that might be really one we go for. The scene. Yeah, and then Addy it disappears. Piece. Okay, let's actually try that because that could be um, much easier to add more um, context to the video, which I do really like uh, in a way. Um, and I almost wonder if we ought to reposition our... Uh, our video just to give us a tiny bit more room up there. Um, I don't think that it would look bad if I decided to drag this down so long as it doesn't encroach upon like this area here which would be where your comments and stuff is for Instagram. So let's actually get rid of um, our thick and thin uh, because I don't think that we need that one. Let's go ahead and yeah I want to right click and delete that and let's throw this here and let's use this um, clean and fast so we have our voiceover explaining let's come over here um, as we kind of get started with our thumbnail nailing we'll throw that right there um, and then let's see so a bunch of different scenes we could use for our project yeah that comes in right there and I think that let's do a little editing on this. Let's change the color of the shape bar and we can come back. We'll drag it over here just so we can select it and see the portion where I have my color palette up. And I will just, let's change that to like that blue. It might also look good if we changed it to like the pink. The pink could be cute. Um, let's do the pink because then the text could be the dark color or the other way around we'll try it the other way around first so we have that dark blue color that matches really well um, and then we'll come into the follow on social media the text portion um, and let's go ahead and grab that text color snag that that blue or that pink um, and then let's bring it back over here to this and go ahead and just throw that right there um, and let's see how that looks a bunch of different scenes we could eh. use for our project I think the purple is a little odd. I think the purple is odd. Uh, let's change it to to the blue color. Um, I'll bring it back over here. Let's change it to the blue because I think that looks better for text. And then we'll change the bar color to like uh, light green. Could do something like that. Something bright. Maybe something a little more yellow toned, which, because we have kind of some of that yellow tone right there. And let's see how that looks. We'll scrub back to about right here. Drag this, and then let's see how that comes in thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes we could use for our project, 
let the chat vote. That's kind of cool. Ended up going um, with this cute little scene. I will try one. Crocodile. I will try one more idea, and that is having the bar that uh, blue color. Hold on, let me um, scrub it over here. Um, I am pretty proud of my color sampling hack here. Um, I, I think that maybe we will do the, um, this is the text. Let's do the text like a super bright color that's almost white, but like in that green spectrum. And then we'll do the bar, the dark color. So we'll come over to the shape bar and do that. You know, you do have to noodle with things sometimes, and I think that, that it's, it's okay to experiment, especially considering, like, how easy it is to kind of jump in here and edit it. Why not? You know, just make sure you get that video look right. A bunch of different scenes we could use for our project. I like that. Let the chat vote. I like this a lot. Um, I am going to make it a little larger um, because I think it will be more visible, and I want to line it up to the edge here, and I think that I could get away with, um, kind of making this kind of pop out here, but if I want to add more, I have room to breathe, um, with more text. So this is perfect, and let's go ahead and alter this text. I want to say, um, uh, we could say concept stage, you know, and then put some context. Let's say concept. Let me make sure I put this in caps. Concept stage. Boom. I love it. Um, and that's set at extra bold. Let's go into bison again and we'll make the title. Let me make sure I select all that so that it's set. Let's go into the, um, the title will be bison bold. Uh, and then the text after that, I will just change the font. So let's go ahead and write uh, something like thumb nailing a few scene choices. Maybe I should spell thumbnailing correctly. Thumbnailing a few scene choices. Choosing a final concept. I like that. That works for me. Um, so let's go ahead. Maybe we will make this larger. Um, and I think we can if we go ahead and bump. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I like. I like. I like. Um, let's. Uh, 165 is fine. And then this is 100. And we'll keep that in mind so that everything that comes after stays with this. I love this. I think this is super cute. So concept stage, S thumbnailing a few scene choices, choosing a final concept. And that can just be up for a little bit um, as we kind of go into that mode. And this is a few lines here. So we can go ahead and bump that there. That nice bar is lined up with the edge of our content, which I think is looking really cool. And let's peek at the final product. I started by thumbnailing a bunch of different scenes we could use for our project let the chat vote and we actually ended up going with this cute little scene of our crocodile character sitting in the middle of a circle of stones we started kind of perfect perfect and then uh now to finish the call outs i just will listen to my voiceover and kind of figure out what the next one will be so i'm gonna double click this or duplicate this excuse me and um, I'm gonna drag this right over here and we're gonna see what the next call out needs to be so I've just got done explaining the thumbnailing uh, and now we are going to um, I think the next is like kind of solidifying an idea um, uh, I would say that would be how would I phrase that I would phrase that as a um, uh, developing a look that, that's probably what I would say. So let's see. Middle of a circle of stones. We started kind of playing around with different styles. So let's call this, um, wanna make sure I have this selected, boom. I didn't wanna move it. All right, developing a look. I wanna make sure 
that I'm spelling developing right. Um, I'm pretty sure I am. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how you spell developing. This happens to me often is I will be live streaming and spell something totally wrong and then there you go. That's all. <laughs> that's it. Um, so developing a look and we will uh, say like the description um, could be uh, testing textures, te testing brushes, textures, and colors uh, and settling on that look. You know, something like that. So let's just see how that all looks. Testing colors. We'll say brushes first. Brushes, textures, and uh, colors. Settling, or choosing a, we could say choosing a final, um, I don't want to repeat words, you know, because I already say developing a look. Maybe it doesn't matter if I say testing brushes, textures, and colors, choosing a final look for the project. Let's see that. Can I fit project here? Yes, I can. Testing brushes, textures, and colors, choosing a final look for the project. Let's see how that feels. Of a circle of stones. We started kind of playing around with different styles we could go for for the rendering process and then really built out the scene, adding the solid shapes, choosing colors to start painting everything in, developing a style for how that texture would be applied. And then we actually isolated each individual. Okay, I'm going to stretch this one out, you know, so it stays for a while. Texture would be applied and then we actually isolate and then I can say, you know, we're isolating stuff. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and your would be applied. And then let's duplicate that. Throw this right here because now we're talking about isolating portions of the piece. And then we actually isolate. Let's uh, edit this text real quick. Make sure I have that selected. Isolating files for animation. Isolating files, and we'll call this uh, this portion. We'll say uh, prepping files for animation, um, separating elements, that sort of thing. Let's say separating and prepping elements for the animation process. I like it. Perfect. Coming into play. It was a lot of fun. Bobbing up and down in the water. The uh, water ripple. I will add that back and then I'm just going to do a simple call out that just says animating. Animating them in the scene. In the scene. Things bobbing up and down in the water. Um, I can say something a little specific about this. So I will say we used path animation uh, and frame animation to create um, a dynamic, create dynamic motion within the scene. So let's do that. And then we're gonna start adding some more fun stuff. I know this is of all of the graphics and elements that we can add during this project. This is probably the most boring part, um, but we got to get that in. And I think that even though we did take some time on it, I think that it does look really nice the way that we've done it. So, um, so we've added all those things. Now let's change this uh, text real quick um, just to vibe well. Let's call this animation. or animating the scene boom and let's say uh you know using a combo of path and frame animation methods 
to um, create dynamic motion. Movement. I'm going to say a combo because I want to kind of have, I think all of these have had a title and two lines so far. And I, since that's like kind of the norm now by accident, I kind of want to keep that. So let's put animation here because animation fits there and we'll put this here and we'll say uh, motion. Yeah. Animating the scene, a combo of path and frame animation methods to create dynamic motion. I think that's perfect. Short, sweet, to the point. Everything looks very nice. Um, and I think that really, really works. I feel like this is uh, very informative. It's simple, but it's informative. And as you're um, watching everything that's happening, you can kind of peek at the uh, descriptions and things a little bit if you want to, um, or you can just kind of listen to my voice and watch the screen. Uh, but I think that works. Now, this is where we can do some fun stuff in the beginning and the end to add um, some little call outs for this. So I am just going to um, bring in, let's say, I feel like we should choose a different title if we want. We could do a different title. Let's try something like this. Let's try this. Let's throw this in here. Um, and let's throw that right there at the beginning. Oh, we want this on top, actually. Yeah, we want this on top. Uh, let's see how I that goes. I an illustration boot camp on Adobe Live. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's go ahead and alter this. I'm going to bump this up. That's super cute right there. I'm not going to lie. That's super adorable. I feel like that's perfect. And I think it matches well with our other motifs. So this is fine. Um, and let's go ahead and alter this. I think I'll drag this over to our um, color palette here just so I can make sure that we um, get the right colors in there. So let's go ahead to um, let's do our lines. First line color. First line, second line. Oh, the shapes here. Um, not to be confused with lines of text. So let's go ahead and add the colors for our shapes. Boom. And I wish I could make them a little larger because they're not really very... Um, they're not really very thick. But I wonder if we add an outline, if we can make it thicker um, and match the other Mogert we threw in. So let's add shape outline. Oh yeah, and we can do outline size. Perfect. So let's go ahead and just bump that up to like um, something larger. I think that does. I think that does add. I feel like it's not making it too much larger though. Let's kind of look. That works. And does it look like our? Yeah, that matches great. <laughs> that matches perfectly. I love it. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna move this over here where um, we can see some of these at the same time. And I know that's a little confusing because I am altering a lot of stuff here, but I am um, just doing this so that we can see that text and everything at the same time uh, because I'm gonna sample from it. So let's go ahead and uh, first line, we will make it this color that we, ha that we like. Uh, and then the second line, we will make it this same color that we like so it matches with our work i love it um and we'll throw this back over here at the beginning and let's come over here and take a peek so i we've taught got... an illustration boot camp on adobe live all right we've got this i feel like we need to change the font a little bit so let's go back to bison because i love bison um and we will make that bold and then we will come to our first line and go to bison again uh, and make this, I feel like it should be regular um, and we can make this larger because I've changed the font now so it's a little smaller. Let's go ahead and boom, bring that up and maybe larger, honestly, maybe larger. We don't need the uh, outlines to be so crazy. Maybe it's a little too crazy. We can kind of bring the outline down to like four. I think that looks good. All right, so let's uh, title our project. We could say um, 
fresco um let's see fresco boot camp or illustration boot camp illustration boot camp Do we need to say boot camp? We might not, because I'm just doing like, you know, kind of, I talk in the video about it having been a boot camp, but we can say, uh, let's see, how do I want to title this? We could say, um, I want to say like fresco boot camp, but the Waco do that doesn't look that great. Uh, we could try, I'm just going to, you know, type randomly in there to hold that place, but we could say fresco, fresco boot camp. That works. Fresco Boot Camp on Adobe Live. I think that will do nicely. Um, and I almost wonder if, could we do, yes. Creative process. And I'm going to turn this into a smaller size. And I'm going to turn that to, oops, kind of adds a weird little gap. Let's do spacing on this. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Okay. Let me highlight this portion and we'll make that bold or demi bold maybe would work. Demi bold. I love it. Fresco Bootcamp on Adobe Live, we can, um, I might make this slightly smaller so that it fits really nicely. And let's go ahead and kind of line that up. That is perfect. I taught an illustration bootcamp on Adobe Live. I started by thumbnailing perfect. a bunch of different scenes we could use. That looks great. Um, and we could make it say something else, uh, towards the end here if we wanted, but I think, um, let's see, I think, I think that's good. I think that's good. Um, let's go ahead and, um, I will just duplicate this. Uh, and throw it on the end there. Uh, but I think this is fine and we will jump in real quick and make a uh, kind of a cover uh, for it because now that we have our video made, which I may edit a little bit outside of the stream um, just to double check, maybe I'll think of something else that I wanna put on there. Um, but let's come over and look at the export settings real quick. So I wanna call this um, uh, boot camp reel. Um, I want to navigate honestly to the proper folder here um, before I export, but we can come over to advanced settings um, and you can select if you want, you know, 1080p, how many frames per second, um, all that good stuff. And then you can just hit export um, and it will just export for you very easily. Um, and while we are doing that, let's dive in and create what we're going to need as far as posting this. Let's go ahead and pull up, uh, Adobe Express because we need stuff for posting. Um, I'm going to, uh, just use a blank, uh, Instagram story, uh, file here and all I'm gonna do really is just come over and drag in some of my assets and things from the previous boot camp episodes to create something that looks nice and will match with my project so I'm just gonna add uh, some of the the background here so we have like these three colors in here that matches with everything that we worked on uh, and then I'm gonna drag in the uh, illustration uh, set here which came in the starter files for challenge number three and I'm gonna crop and shape this so I'm just gonna pull this um, right to the edge like that uh, and bring it up boom 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 and I'm just gonna make him really large here uh, let's go ahead and hit the check mark I'm just gonna make him really large and just kind of sit in here like that I think that is cool um, and I could even if I wanted to I can even um, duplicate this and let's shrink it down and make it small again and then open the crop and shape also 
uh, to uncrop some of these um, elements that we were using. So something like this, I could come over and uh, crop and shape out this rock and just throw this rock in here if I want, you know, kind of a design element like that. I can just grab this and throw that right in there maybe down here. Um, I could even rotate this a little bit if I just want some of that texture there so it doesn't look like he's kind of cut off at the end there. And I could do it again. I could duplicate it and kind of, um, let's go ahead and rotate this back uh, and crop and shape and just bring this over to the other side and grab this other rock uh, like that. In fact, we could just use the other, like the last rock, I think would probably be good. Um, let's go ahead and say okay and grab that. We just got our other little rock in there so I will just make that larger. Um, I think that looks good and I will add some text. Let's add like a little title here to our piece because we definitely need to show people what this is about. Um, so let's come over to text and let's say add text and I'm just going to write a uh, uh, illustration fresco boot camp like so we'll change this to bison because we have been using bison a lot uh, in our project and we want everything to be very matchy matchy so let's go to like bold bison and let's make this a uh, kind of a light green color that is almost um, kind of a yellowy color and very close to like the white um, value like that we can align it like so and we can pull this back here so that it says um, the fresco boot camp stuff just like that which I think is really cool and we kind of you know line that up maybe with his snout to the center and I'm doing it to the center here because um, I like to have my uh, my tiles my covers for my Instagram reels I like to have them show up on my profile um, and so everything should be centered in fact I might actually switch these I might actually switch um, let's come over here uh, to this and make this actually the color of the font and switch the font to the color of the um, previous shape there we go so I want this you know to show up on my profile uh, and on the profile it'll be cropped so you'll only see what's in the center so this is kind of the best way to do that uh, and then here we can add um, creative process real um, and I'll turn the shape off of that and change this text back to that interesting like off-white kind of color uh, and we'll put this right here we might make that a little bit smaller and just kind of um, place it right in maybe kind of bring this over so that that's all lined up and he's kind of hidden but you know it's got a little bit of something something to make people kind of wonder okay what's this about uh, and then the last thing I could do is open my libraries and snag one of my logos uh, and you can very easily turn a uh, design element to whatever color you want just by using the uh, duo tone so I like to just set the highlights and the shadows to the same color to make like a solid um, shape the color that I want and I can just throw that right in there um, and I think that looks pretty cool so it's just it's very simple you know it's very very simple and I think it works I could also um, put this up in the corner here so that you know when it is on the reels page that area is not empty let's do that let's go ahead and um, change I think that looks better we'll change uh, both of the colors to like this dark blue um, just so that there's something up there um, and that looks nice so I'm gonna go ahead and download that and now I have a real cover um, and a reel created and I can just export straight from uh, Adobe Express so I have something for my uploads um, and that is the process uh, so I'm super excited that you folks joined me for this and for all of the other days it's been a blast working with you I hope that you will stay tuned for more uh, content coming up next today I am going to be back uh, streaming uh, some Firefly with Danielle Morimoto I think it's going to be super fun so I hope you all will stay tuned for the other content and come see me again uh, later today at 2 p.m. Pacific time. But for now, that is all the time I have. And I'll see you guys later. Adios, folks.